What internet connection sharing does is allows you to take one machine and have it act as a gateway. So I'm going to have this ICS host computer over here. It's just a regular computer. Could be a, an XP machine, could be a Vista, Windows 7, 2000, 2008, 2003, whatever. And what it does is it hooks directly into this little DSL or cable modem. It gets a public IP address and then it does what's called network address translation. Now, it's not pure network address translation. If I want to do NAT, I would want to do it on an RS server. Because the problem with using this with internet connection sharing is it doesn't play well with DHCP. Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol provides us with IP addresses, subnet masks, default gateways, all that good stuff. What the ICS machine is going to do, though, is it's going to pretend that it's a DHCP server. It is going to bully its way in and start handing out IP addresses. It's also going to identify itself as a default gateway and as a DNS server and as a Win server. Because what will happen is, is that it will go in and you say, oh, I want to query, find out where www.stormwood.com is. You will send it to that ICS host, and that ICS host will then forward it out to a DNS server and then get the answer back and hand it to you. So, I mean, it's, it's okay if that's the only machine that you have. But the problem with, the biggest problem that I have is, number one, it doesn't work well with DHCP. So in a corporate environment, this is a nightmare. But number two, the problem is, is that that internet connection sharing host is connected directly to the internet. What does that mean? It means everybody's doing port scans on it. All the viruses and worms that are sitting out there just waiting to gain access, they have a free ride on this particular machine. So my recommendation is, is that you never, ever, 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 ever hook the machine up directly to the internet. You never want to plug any of your machines directly into the DSL or cable modem. Instead, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go in there and you're going to want to put a little router box right here. A lot of times this router box is also your wireless access point, whatever. But this little router box is going to refuse any connections that are not established. Now what does that mean? It means that if I go out and I request a web page from a machine somewhere, the packets that are coming back are going to be flagged as established. They will be allowed through the router, and then they can go to our particular machine. Another advantage, or another disadvantage of ICS hosts, is that if this particular machine happens to go down, or it's turned off, none of these systems can go out and talk to the network any longer. They, they can't talk to the internet. It's blocked out. You've got to leave this machine on 724. Well, wouldn't it be a better idea to simply have a little router box here, hook the DSL cable modem into the router box, hook that into the switch, hook this guy into the switch, then everybody can go through and talk to the router box, which is fully compliant, whether, whether if you're using DHCP, or this can actually act as a NAT device that acts as a DHCP server. It also does DNS proxy for you. But this thing can be on all the time, no big deal. It's not going to be taking up a whole lot of space. It's not going to suck down all the juice like a regular computer does. And it's not going to be vulnerable because by default it firewalls all the traffic from the internet. So internet connection sharing, not really a good thing.